Hey YouTubers, I just wanted to do a little bit of an update video on the final port sizes on these mid-90s LT1 cylinder heads. Of course, I'm right in the middle of, what I'm trying to do is get a port size measurement on all of these, or on these cylinder heads, because they're going to have to have some guide work done to them, and there might have to be some uh, valve job done, I don't know for sure. I think it all depends on whether they end up being able to do like a K liner, valve guide liner repair, or if they're going to recommend a full uh, valve guide replacement. I don't know. I'm going to run them down to Nolan Cylinder Head in Kansas City, have, them, have him take a look at it and see what they think. Um, I just wanted to show you guys. Uh, and I do apologize because this is kind of a spur of the moment video that I should have been planning ahead on. Uh, these exhaust ports started out at 65, I believe they were 65 cc's. This inside port, because generally what I'll do, I like to measure an inside port, not an outside. Because in my experience, the outside ports of a cylinder head are always generally slightly larger than the inside ones. So I like to get a good representation on, you know, the port balance and how well the head came out. Get you some shots of the, you know, what the shapes are and the guide and all that in just a second. But I'm getting ready to flip it over and do the CC on the intake runner. Okay guys, I talked about earlier showing you some of the port texture and the final port work this is an example of my exhaust port where basically we just uh, raise the roof slightly to straighten the shot of that exhaust pulse reduced uh, significantly reduced the uh, valve guide boss and uh, did a proper percentage bowl cut and blend on the seat and then you can tell see if I can back up here just the ambient light from outside you can see where it's let me push this down here see where it's reflecting that is not polished guys but i guarantee if you put a what i <laughs> i always refer to as the glamour shot of the internet as you see a lot of porters they like to do this game to show you how nice their port, how smooth their ports are. And there's nothing wrong with that, guys. <clears throat> but it's a little misleading. You know what I mean? When you see a lot of photos of port work with backlit, and you know, when you backlight a port, it really accentuates uh, the smoothness, the ergonomic design, you know, insert port work. But I just like to throw out to everybody that when you get a set of heads ported, if they show up and they look like this, or even maybe not quite that you know, smooth, it wasn't that you didn't get a good port job. They just didn't go that extra step to hit it with a cross buff or hit it with a finer than you know, 120 grit sanding roll. Because you can get it almost as shiny with a worn out 120 grit sanding roll. But I mean, that just gives you an example how much backlighting a port, you know, can make things look really cool. But I like to show it both with and without so that people know what they're getting and what to expect if they're looking at somebody else's heads um, on the port. Now these are dirty. These have not been cleaned. But on these, um, let's just flip it over, set it down. So you guys can see what's going on here. Get you, get you zoomed in here. Uh, basically, if you look at this port work, what we're looking at is a bowl cut and blend. Uh, you know, I've talked about my percentages many times, but I try to do an appropriate percentage cut on the bowl, blend it all the way in. I try to smooth as much as I can this radius, which is your short turn. You're gonna have a short turn on intake and exhaust, naturally. Um, I try to reduce the valve guide boss to a 
uh, I call it a practical amount. Like I don't like to just, unless they're just all out race type heads, I particularly don't like to go full crazy on my valve guide shaping. Tell you why, and we may run into that on these heads. When you start looking at replacing valve guides themselves, you want enough meat there to hold up to the pressure because a lot of these aluminum heads have what's called tapered valve guides. So the inside is one, you know, a uniform diameter, because hello, it's a valve guide, but where it presses into the head casting can be tapered. So you want that valve guide boss to be sturdy or robust enough to be able to stand up to a valve guide change if the machine shop decides that, you know, these heads need complete new valve guides and not just liners, I need this head to hold up to that process. So, you know what I mean? When you use a common sense style of porting, because, you know, you could cut more down beside these valve guides, but I was trying not to exceed port volume to the 194 valve and I was trying, like I said, to maintain some structural integrity to that valve guide boss for, for, for future serviceability. So, um, as I stated earlier, uh, we ended up with 182 cc intake runners, 72 cc exhaust runners. Um, I do believe these heads are going to wake up that little 350. Plus, he's throwing in a new comp... Uh, I don't know if it is the extreme cam or what it is, but he's got a little comp cam picked out for the motor, plus the porting work I've done on the upper, or the upper plenum intake. You know, this thing ought to put down flush to the tire, no problem, which is his goal, and that's what we want to do. But I just wanted to throw this all on video before I took it to Nolan's to find out exactly what all we're going to have to have done to him to make him, you know, 100%. Because I want them to run without issue. And you know, if you've got excessive valve guide wear, revving an engine, you know, you could pop the end off of a valve easy. Especially if you're running two piece valves. Not the, you know, if you get a valve that's wiggling or wobbling at RPM, all it takes is the right amount of heat and then just a certain amount of pressure in the end that tulip, the big end of your valve can snap off. So. You know, I don't want that to happen to him because this is going to be a pretty strong running engine that he can enjoy for quite a while. So, anyway, <clears throat> that's where we're at. 182 on the intake, 72 on the exhaust. It's got 55 chambers. Uh, hopefully, those will be down closer to 53 by the time we get them. Sir, we'll check them when we get them back and get our final assembly because you always want to check your chamber after your final assembly. That way you've got your valve job, your valve, or if you were going to lap the valves, if you were getting a valve job, if you're replacing valves, you know, etc., etc. All those things can affect how high or low your valves actually physically sit in the chamber area. And all of those can, of course, affect the chamber volume. Add in surfacing the head, removing material. That's going to also affect chamber volume, so... That's where we're at right now. I fully expected these heads to be to Daniel by now being bolted on his uh, short block that's ready and waiting. But as usual, things pop up in the hot rodding world. And uh, there's a guy over in Sweden called Mr. Cyclone. And every time something goes bad or something breaks, he always says, this is racing and just moves on and keeps on, keeps on keeping on. So. Appreciate you guys watching these videos. Uh, I know this isn't ha isn't been a very uh, timely series, but hopefully it's going to include enough solid, usable information that will help you guys when you do your own porting projects or go out and help your friends and family build some horsepower. You guys have a safe 4th of July. Everybody come back with all their fingers, toes, eyes, ears, hair, you know, on their head and their butt. So... You guys have a good time. Happy 4th of July. Thanks for watching. Just occurred to me to let you guys know when you use these industrial type syringes 
or plastic plunger type syringes to CC heads, especially when you're using alcohol, do yourself a favor. When you get done working with it, pull it apart. See how it's already starting to get stuck? And you'll have to pull this apart, treat this with WD-40 inside and out and store it with just a little bit of WD-40 on that rubber seal or it'll get stuck in there. Don't panic. If you have an air compressor, don't try. If this thing gets stuck, let's say you use this syringe and you didn't treat it and you didn't know. If this thing gets stuck in the bottom, if you try to force it, the handle will pop out of that rubber plunger. But what you got to do is take an air hose, put an air hose on the end of this and just pulse it and the air pressure will easily push that stuck plunger out and then you can treat it with WD-40 and still use it. It's just a little tip I wanted to throw in there while I was cleaning up.